Hi everyone, Happy New Year. 2018 has already started so I am really hoping you've already thought about what your financial goals are and you are ready to hit the ground running. We want to make the most of 2018. We want to make sure every single day counts and every day we are making some sort of progress because progress, no matter how small or how big it is, it is what is going to fuel our determination, our commitment and our sense of purpose in our lives. Now, if you haven't already started thinking about your financial goals or acting on it, that's okay. I'm here to help. And I'm going to help you throughout 2018. I'm going to be really on your case. I'm going to be really making sure that you haven't like lost track or fallen off the path, you know, in achieving your goals. I'm going to make sure that you stay motivated and focused and determined. And if you have fallen off the path, that's okay. Cause I'm going to help you brush yourself off, pull yourself up again and help you quickly get back on that track. And if you need to make a few adjustments along the way, that's okay because I'm going to be helping you and holding your hand. So there is nothing to be afraid of. Now is the time for you to realize that you deserve to create for yourself because you're a responsible, energetic, vibrant person. You deserve financial peace and harmony in your life. And you're going to absolutely love the sense of freedom, choice and luxury that comes from achieving this goal. So if you haven't actually started doing your financial goals, that's okay. Again, as I said, I'm here to help. I want you to be able to articulate to me what are your financial goals. There is no point saying to me, oh, Hannah, I just want to pay off my credit card debt. Hmm, that's a good goal to have, don't get me wrong, but I want you to be able to, you know, if I was to pop out of your breakfast cereal in the morning, I want you to go, hey, Hannah, my financial goal is to pay off $7,000 off my student debt by July 2018 and I'm going to be doing it and achieving it by doing these things and guess what? I've already got started. I'm already starting to see it coming down. That's what I need to you to be into that zone and to into that flow where you know exactly what you're doing. So make sure you can articulate your financial goals. The next thing is I want you to think about your priorities of financial goals. I, I'm sort of in two minds as to how many financial goals you should have. If there's lots of little ones, that's great. But if there are lots of big ones, you need to think about which ones are the most important and really focus and like streamline your energy towards achieving those goals and then sort of work down the list. Now you need to work towards your own capabilities and the, your own other goals that you're also juggling at the same time. So when you are setting your goals, make sure you give them priority, make sure you don't overload yourself, but also always you want to make sure you're always stretching yourselves and growing in lots of different directions. The next thing I want you to do is think about why is that goal so important? I listen to people talk about goals and they tell me what they are and they have no passion or like spark in them. And it makes me really sad because that is the key ingredient to achieving your financial goals. If I set myself a financial goal to save, say, $20,000, if I don't really feel excited about that $20,000 and don't really know what I'm going to use it for and don't really get the purpose of it all, I am guaranteed to fail. I will get distracted. I will lose motivation. I guarantee by come like end of January, I'm off shopping. Absolutely not. I need to understand if my goal to save $20,000 is because it's going to give me the feeling of responsibility. It's going to give me a sense of security and safety. I'm going to feel like I'm back in control of my finances. I'm going to feel really proud. You need to stop and think about what are the financial feelings and emotional feelings behind that particular financial goal of yours. Now on that note, you need to make sure your financial goals are yours, not society's goals, your goals. I want you to think about what excites you. Just because your best friend has a financial goal of saving up for a deposit on a property, that's fine, that's their goal. But if it doesn't excite you and ignite you where you want to spring out of bed and embrace life and really get into the journey and experience of it all, then you need to adjust that and work out what actually does that for you. Don't feel obliged to follow people or copy people. Create your own financial goals. And it doesn't matter how big or how small they are. They just have to be meaningful to you. The next thing is you need to make sure these goals are achievable. Now, I love to set things that are a little bit crazy out of my reach, but I really love doing that because I love to challenge myself and I love to see what I am really capable of achieving. And I like to look back and go, you know what, I set myself a really ambitious goal, but, and I didn't achieve it, but I know I put my head, heart and soul into it and, and I can feel proud about that. 
However, you do need to be honest with yourself and you need to be realistic. You know, you need to look at what your situation looks like right now and what have you got to work with right now to achieve those. Now, having great goals and big goals is fantastic. Do not get me wrong on this, but you need to make sure you experience that feeling of progress and you actually have you know, a little bit of self-belief in achieving your financial goals. So if your goal is to say, say $50,000 and you're earning $50,000, maybe you just, because that's obviously with tax and living expenses, it's not impossible, but it is going to be a lot more challenging. Maybe you say to yourself, okay, well, I'm going to try and save $20,000, you know, in the next nine months. Don't be afraid to tone down the goal or extend the deadline. There is nothing wrong with that. The whole point is you're making progress. You're stepping up. You're taking responsibility for your financial situation and you're improving it and you will reap the benefits of it immediately. When I say immediately, I mean from the moment you decide to set a financial goal for yourself that is meaningful, you will instantly start feeling really excited about your future, I guarantee. Okay, so the next thing I want you to do is game plan. That is where you look at your financial goals and you grab your diary and you write down all the things that you could be challenges that you could face. Think about what actions do you need to do to achieve these goals. You may need to look at your budget and look at, okay, well, I get paid this much money if I want to pay off this credit card debt by then or this student debt by then or save this much money by then. How much money per week, per fortnight, per month do I need to put into a separate savings account to make this actually happen? Look at the timeframes. Look at what things you need to do before then to make it actually come to fruition. And if you achieve your financial goals earlier, woohoo, that means you can set new ones. And I'll come to that in a second, but you could potentially set new and more exciting goals. So you need to actually look at how you're going to make this happen. And as I like to recommend to anyone with great financial goals is why don't you look at doing the thousand dollar project with me? The book is hitting the shelves, I believe on the 22nd of February, but you can actually pre-order your book already both in Australia and overseas. And there's also eBooks available which is great because it's so much more environmentally responsible. So I will link in the description box below. So if you have some really serious financial goals that you're really excited about, do the thousand dollar project with me. I'm going to be starting it at the end of February, but you can start as soon as you like. And that is a great way of actually getting progress and getting a really great game plan for you. And all the instructions are actually in the book. So it's going to be really helpful. However, as I said that you can also watch heaps of my YouTube videos and see how I actually do the thousand dollar project, but it's a lot of fun. Anyway, my point is you need to have a game plan. You have to know exactly what is required of you to make those goals happen and do not ever underestimate the ability or the power, I should say of little things every day. If you can only afford to put $1 on your savings account or $1 on your student debt, that's okay because that's progress. And look, you never know what might happen in the next couple of days. Later, you might be able to put more money on it. But what you want to do is build up momentum. And when you build up momentum, you're building up your motivation, you're building up your commitment and you're building up your determination. That is what is going to help get you over the line and for you to start realizing, oh wow, this is actually happening. I'm changing my financial future. I'm, ch I'm achieving my financial goals. I'm getting stuff done. This is different to the, the years in the past because Sugar Mama channel is really serious about financial goals. All right, on that note of game plan, I need you to also plan and prepare for the tough times, the challenging times, the times are exhausted and you potentially just might want to give up on your financial goals. Now we are humans. We have feelings, we have experiences, we need to embrace the fact that life can be messy at times. So I want you to stop and plan and prepare for those things. And there are some really simple, easy things that you can do that will protect you from those challenging times, but more importantly, get you back on track and also get you back on track quickly. Now, what I recommend is you have an emergency savings account at all times. So say, for example, your financial goal is to save up a deposit for a home loan and you're really excited, you're doing so well, but then you have a prang on your car. Now, if you had some emergency money set aside, that problem is quarantined, it's limited. You can quickly fix it because you have some emergency money set aside that will hopefully fix the damage on the car or most of the damage on the car. And you can quickly pay off the rest and go back to building up that deposit, you know, for the home that you want to buy, which is a really exciting financial goal of yours. If you didn't have that emergency savings account, 
you potentially could feel like you've given up on your goal because you'd have to see your main savings account really diminish or depreciate or drop to help cover the cost of that getting that car fixed. Now, obviously it's the same amount of money either way that you look at it, but it, I really believe in where you channel your focus and attention and energy. By focusing that attention to that savings account that is purely for the achievement of you getting a, a deposit on for, to buy a home is incredibly important. Always be at peace with this money and this emergency money. There will definitely be times where you need it and there'll be definitely times where you really appreciate having it. So always make sure you have an emergency savings account. Now the next thing that I recommend you do is you always budget. Now I recently launched the Sugar Budget and it is an app available on the iTunes store. Now this instructs you as to how to manage your money so that you can actually set aside money into an emergency savings account and quickly build it up. The second thing that I recommend you do to prepare for the tough times is to know what your triggers are. I know that I, for example, if I have a fight with Tom, I feel the desire to go and shop and buy things. But now when I catch myself doing that, I quickly turn off the computer or my phone and go for a walk or go and have a chat with Tom. Make sure you understand what your triggers are that create destructive or self-destructive or bad behaviors. Also, another important thing is to create healthy habits. Things like, you know, regularly putting money into a savings account, even though it's only a couple of dollars, it's really important and builds up over time. Now, coming back to that point where I talked about priority of goals, being a financial planner, I recommend that you focus on paying down toxic, non-deductible debt before you work on building up your financial goals where you talk about saving and investing and preparing for retirement. As I've previously mentioned, I will link this video in the description box below. You must get rid of the toxic non-deductible debt first before you start building real financial wealth. Now, when you build real financial wealth, it's like building a house. You want to build it on a rock solid foundation so that when a bad storm comes through, your house may be a little bit damaged, but it's still standing strong and intact. Now, if you build up financial wealth off the back of credit card debt, car loans, personal loans, that is not going to help you. You actually need to get rid of all that debt first. So when it comes to achieving your financial goals, I really want you to prioritize paying off the, you know, the student debt, the credit card debt, the car loans, the personal loans first before you then go into saving up deposits for home loans or investment properties or buying shares or building passive income streams or planning for retirement. You need to understand what your priorities are and then work down the list. It will be a much more efficient use of your money. And of course, when you're on the path to achieving your financial goals, make sure you reward yourselves. As I said, we're humans, we're not robots, we're not machines. Make sure you stop and take the time to look at what you've achieved. Give yourself a, like a well-earned pat on the back and even some sort of reward. It doesn't have to be a really expensive reward, but something like that makes you feel good about what you are doing for yourself because taking control of your finances is incredibly responsible. There are a lot of people out there who don't and I'm trying to break that barrier to realize what how easy it is to take control of your finances. So as you feel progress, as you feel that momentum like growing and your finances like all the pieces starting to come together and you know feel empowered, I want you to make sure you stop and acknowledge that and you show gratitude towards that feeling and you actually harvest more of that. And it can be something as simple as going and getting a massage, um, going and buying a new great book or even treating yourself with a little break away. But make sure you reward yourself so that you're setting the right positive intentions and affirmations and encouragement for yourself to continue on with the progress. And then the final thing that I recommend you do is you review. Review what are you doing? What is working? What's not working? What do you need to change? What is going to help you achieve your goals even more? Now, if you find that through 2018, you are really supercharged and you are like kicking and those goals and you're ticking them off your list, that is fantastic. In fact, I want to hear from you because I would love to hear your story and your secrets to your own success. But I also want you to continue on growing. Just because you've achieved one goal doesn't mean you stop right there and celebrate. Of course, that's great. But I want you to continue on evolving. Remember, this is about personal financial growth. So say, for example, you finally paid off your credit cards. That is fantastic. I'm so proud of you. How about you now start thinking about building up some serious savings? How about you start thinking about some financial goals around building up passive income streams? 
how about you start looking at like what where your retirement options are and what you know you could do to potentially retire earlier or with more money throughout retirement I want you to continuously as I always like to say raise your bar keep growing because when we're growing we are alive now I have gotten very excited about this video it's probably gone on for a lot longer than I originally hoped but I also wanted to use this as an opportunity to say Happy New Year let you know that the sugar budget app has launched it is available at the YouTube's app store and um, at this stage it is not available for Androids and the reason behind that is because it is going to cost me $40,000 Australian to upgrade it to the Android version now that does not mean it's not gonna happen it will but it will happen when I'm in a financial position to be able to pay $40,000 to do that because as I've explained previously I have invested my own money into this app I personally designed it with an incredible crew of really talented um, people but I just couldn't get to that $40,000 investment point yet but it will happen in the it will happen in the future so if you are serious about your financial goals you've got to do a budget you've got to know what cash flow is coming in what cash flow is going out you need to know what budgets and bills are coming in so that you can set aside the right amount of money to achieve your financial goals I use my sugar budget all the time I have all my personal financial information sitting in it and it tells me exactly what to do with my monthly pay and I have to say it is so satisfying seeing my everyday savings account and my emergency money account sitting there um, and building up and knowing that if anything goes wrong I've got money there and also I'm on track to achieve my financial goals so I highly recommend it I test it out for yourself if you like it please put a review please give me a star rating I'd really appreciate it because the more of this I can get out there the quicker I can get the Android version for you guys if you haven't already please make sure you subscribe because I'm really excited about sharing 2018 with you together and together we are going to create such an exciting life for ourselves where financial stress is just something that is not in our book it's not in our head it's not in our heart it's something we don't have and that's because we've taken positive action and choices to eradicate financial stress from our lives anyway I'm wishing everyone an incredible Christmas New Year break if you're off from work and next week everything is back on two videos a week lifestyle love money Monday and some really exciting content coming up which I created in my head um, over New Year's Eve so I'll be sharing with that a telling you all about that next week so ciao for now and I will let you get back to enjoying New Year's ciao